Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, all that good stuff. Hope you're having an awesome day. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the five essential skills for mastering Luminar. Now, this, this video will be a little bit different than some of my previous videos, and that is because these five skills each involve um, a bit of experimentation and work and practice and that sort of thing. Um, and there's various ways to do things, and there's a lot of things we're gonna talk about. And so the reason this video is gonna differ is because I don't have time in a single video to go in depth about everything that I'm gonna talk about. So in some ways, I'm kind of skimming the surface of these five topics. However, um, I do have videos about them, and as appropriate, I'll drop links into the corner so that you can check out those other videos. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the five essential skills for mastering Luminar. Okay, so skill number one is filters. Um, there's a lot of filters in Luminar, of course, and you gotta get familiar with them, and the way to do that is to experiment. So I have this photo here, and you know, the first thing you do is you look at that photo and you say, you know, Jim, it's kind of dark. You're right, it is dark, so how can I lighten it? And by knowing the filters, you can say, well, I got a few different ways I can lighten that, just off the top of my head here in the Essentials category. You know, I've got the exposure slider here in um, the Develop filter. Now this is a JPEG, so it's Develop instead of Raw Develop, but that's okay. So there you go, you can quickly, um, lighten the photo there. You might say Accent AI is the way to do it because that's pretty intelligent. Yeah, that does a great job too. Hey, guess what? Smart Tone is pretty cool. That's a great way to do things. Yeah, you're right. It sure is. And so, um, you know, depending on the photo, I may use different uh, tools to get the certain thing done. And that's one of the beautiful things I think about Luminars. There's so many sort of ways to skin the cat. Um, these would be the three that I generally use to brighten it. But again, each photo is different. The point really is that you look at it and you say, yeah, well, it's not exactly, um, you know, it's too dark, right? So let's fix that. So, you know, maybe I'll do a little bit of Accent AI, maybe a little bit of Smart Tone, uh, maybe a little bit of Exposure. And, you know, I, I think it looks pretty good, but now I'm looking at it and saying, well, the colors don't look so great. So maybe I'll come over here and adjust the color temperature so I can get that a little bit more under control. Uh, I'm just kind of riffing here. I don't have a plan for this photo in particular. Maybe add some contrast, maybe add a little bit of clarity. And that's more what it looked like compared to that, right? So that's one exposure from a bracket, sh uh, bracket set that I shot. And that's my current state. Again, it needs some work. This isn't how I'm gonna edit this photo. This is really about how do you learn the filters? And the way you learn them is by jumping in and just jacking around with it. And so. To me, that's number one. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this workspace because, so number one is all about filters and there's 50, right? So you know to get to them, you get over here and you click add filters and here's what I do, right? And here's what I do. I just grab filters sometimes and I think, you know, would that look good uh, if I'm already familiar with the filter and I drag it over there, you know, or click it and, and check it out. Um, but if it's a filter that I don't know anything about, Take five minutes here and there, maybe on your lunch break or at home, or you know, maybe your kids are doing homework or your husband or wife is doing something. And you know, take five minutes, just take a JPEG. It doesn't have to be, hey, this is a professional editing session. This is a five minute, just get in there, you know, quick hit and just throw a filter or two on any photo, move it around, jack around, and see how you, see what impact it has on the photo. And try that with different kinds of photos. And that's how I learned a lot of the filters. And admittedly, there's a lot of them I'm really good at, and there's some I never use and I don't know that much about. Um, so, you know, this is also a plea to myself to take my own advice because, you know, I do all these videos. You might think I know every filter in and out, but I don't. Um, I probably know most of them really well. Some I know incredibly well, and some I don't ever use. I don't really ever think about. So the point is practice, experiment, and that's one step to mastering Luminar. Now, the second essential skill to mastering Luminar is, to me, presets. And that's another way to help you learn filters. And so you can just go to the preset menu. You can click over here. And there's a, a lot of them that come with it. So maybe you go into the basic category and you pick something. Let's take this vivid. And you can see, all right, here's the filters that came into it. Yeah, but, you know, I don't really like it. And so start messing around with that preset and try to adjust some of the colors. I mean, these two sliders have just made a massive difference in that preset. And I think it already looks better. In fact, that looks similar to what I did before. Um, so what do you do? You start messing around with things. Take the basic presets or some of the other presets, or if you have my presets, thank you if you do. Uh, take some of mine, stick them on there, mess around with them. And if you get a look that you want, save your own presets. So just hit Save Filters Preset and say, you know, cool new preset or whatever, and then hit Create New Preset. 
Um, and then it shows up in your user preset category. That's the only one I have there because I've cleaned all mine out. Um, go into other categories, mess around. There's stuff that's available for free from time to time on their website. I've got a lot of those. I've got a number of my own presets. But the point is, I highly recommend that you get in there, click on a preset, mess around with it, see what it does, because it may have filters on there that you didn't think to use on that type of photo. And that's something I did very early on, was just take their presets and start messing around and seeing what kind of looks I could um, create. And then I started saying, you know what, I don't need their presets. I feel like I can make my own because, you know, obviously when you're making presets, you're looking to satisfy your own uh, image of a photo or satisfy your own eye or your own likes. And so I got in there, I just mess around. I started making presets and that's kind of how I started making these preset packs was I made a bunch of them and then I was like, you know, these are pretty good, I think. I mean, obviously a little bit biased um, about my presets, but that's how I got into it. And so create presets, take presets that are already there, make adjustments to them, re, you know, move things around, reposition them, drop filters off of presets, add fil uh, filters to presets, just customize, 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 and keep doing it over and over and over. And I think that's step two to uh, as an essential skill for mastering Luminar. Okay, the third essential skill to mastering Luminar is masking. And so here's another photo. Now this is a different photo, obviously, um, let's just say, and I'm making it up here, I don't really have a plan for the photo, so I'm gonna stick a couple of um, uh, filters on here, and I'm gonna just add some stuff, and I'm gonna try to make the photo look a little bit better than I think it did coming out of camera, uh, and there we go. So now let's say I've got a, f a photo that I kinda like, but I wanna do some customization to it, and that's really where masking comes in. You basically have um, four different kinds of masks, right? So, um, and you can do each of those on a filter. So let me start by adding a filter, uh, and let's say structure, and let's go over here, and I'm just gonna move the structure really high. Say I wanna crunch up the detail, but I don't want it everywhere, so I just want it in the buildings and not in the sky or water. I like skies and water to be smooth, purely a personal preference, but you got basically four kinds of masks. You got the brush mask, you've got a radial mask, you've got the gradient mask and the luminosity mask. And now they're different and I've got a video about masking that I'll put in the uh, in the corner there. And in fact, I do this on a lot of different videos, but the point is experiment with the different types of masks. You could come in here with the brush mask and say, okay, I want structure, so I'm gonna paint. I've got that on paint. Um, currently, it's the whole thing is being masked, but once you start painting, it's gonna show up just where you paint, right? And so let's say I just wanna do some of this stonework and, and I'm going really rough here because I'm doing this live, so it's a sloppy job, but now you look at the mask, and you can see that I've masked over just the buildings, except for where I've gone over the edges and outside the lines, but hey, color outside the lines, that's part of the fun. Um, but uh, you know, I just come in here and do this kind of stuff, and now my mask, which is a structure, um, appears just where I uh, painted it with my brush. So you can do that with uh, also a radial mask where it draws a circle or an oval. You, I've done that in a recent video, which I'll put up here. Uh, you can do that with, the, with a gradient mask. Let's say you wanna make the water look kind of smooth, all right? So I'm gonna add structure again, structure. And this time, you've probably seen this trick before. If you go negative and boost, you can see it creates a real soft blur. Well, then you can take a gradient mask and you can drag this up from the bottom and just kind of do something like that. And this will create kind of a, a different looking, uh, almost like you shot it at a different um, uh, f-stop. Now, you can go like that and there, I've kind of blurred the water. And this is not really an ideal photo for that because the gradient mask goes in kind of straight. But here's a, here's a tip. You can open the brush and then you can come over here to erase and you can say, well, I want to erase it from that stonework. I just want it to be on the... Uh, on the water, right? And so even though the gradient mask is straight, I've just um, created kind of a custom uh, uh, gradient mask because I've uh, erased it from the parts I didn't want it to appear in. Again, not a full masking tutorial. That uh, that link is available to you. But, you know, radial mask, gradient mask, and then, of course, luminosity masks. And I've got an entire video about luminosity masks, so I won't go into the detail there uh, or here, but that's um, that's a big deal. And these are filter masks. And that means I'm taking an individual filter and I can do that multiple times on the same layer and mask it in, right? There's also a layer mask where I could create a new layer and we'll get to layers in a second and apply a bunch of filters on that layer and then mask them in and that's a layer mask. That way every filter on that layer gets masked in to wherever I paint it. So a lot of flexibility in Luminar and one of the reasons I love it so much. But masking is a big deal and that's why it's a third essential skill for mastering Luminar. 
Okay, the fourth essential skill for mastering Luminar for me is layers, right? So you come up here and you see that you have this a plus sign next to layers. Now, if you click on layers, you can do two things basically. You can add a new adjustment layer or you can add a new image layer. The difference is an adjustment layer is gonna open up your uh, sidebar here so you can stick more filters on it. So you can just dump filters and make more edits and then mask them in if you want to on that layer. You could add a preset on a new layer, those kind of things. A new image layer is something that you would do if you're gonna add a new sky, for example. So you could go get a new image layer and go grab a photo of a sky and then it'll lay on top of this image, right? And then you can paint it in with your brush or in fact, I'll put a link up here to one of my more popular videos. It's about a luminosity masking trick for getting a really nice uh, layer mask for adding a new sky. Again, don't have the time. I think that's a 15 or 20 minute video. Don't have the time here to go over that, but the point is if you learn how to use layers and understand them, you have a lot of control over your photo and therefore the results that you get out of Luminar. And I think that's an incredibly important thing. Um, when I first started with Luminar, I was okay with layers. I've been around Photoshop some, but I never really liked it. I've been around other products that had layers, uh, but it was really Aurora HDR and Luminar when I started really using layers a lot and getting into you know, understanding them and how to master them and, and get comfortable with it. And so that's a skill I think super important. I've got videos about using layers and, and layer masking and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of uh, content I already have on my channel here that you can check out. But I think mastering layers is an incredibly uh, powerful tool and something that I recommend. You could also, as a new image layer, you could choose a texture and then apply that texture on top of your photo, change the opacity, or you can mask it in to certain parts of your photo using any of the masking tools, the brush, the radial, the gradient, or the luminosity mask. So there's a lot of flexibility and that's why I think layers is the fourth essential skill for mastering Luminar. Okay, and the final and fifth uh, essential skill for mastering Luminar to me is the tools menu. So if you go up here to tools, you see you have a lot of uh, choices. You have crop, free transform, clone and stamp, as well as erase. Now, I, again, I've got videos about all of these, and so you can check those out as well, especially erase and clone and stamp. I did those together in a video, which I'll put up here in uh, whichever corner it is. I think it's that one. But um, very powerful tools. They allow you to get rid of stuff you might want to get rid of. So Crop is also super important. Let me show you both real quick. Let's say I want to do a cinematic crop here and go 16 by 9, which is kind of my favorite thing right now. Let's say I want to do something like that, and I want to straighten the photo a little bit, maybe something about like that. Okay, let's say I'm happy. I've got a cropped and straightened photo. Looks pretty cool. I like it. However, um, I got some things I want to change in there. Maybe I want to clone and stamp a little bit. Maybe I don't like this blue flag, right? Now, this isn't going to be a full tutorial on clone and stamp. That's what that link is for. But I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select this source. And I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to paint that green tree on top of this flag. Because maybe I don't want that flag in my photo. Quick, easy, and uh, I'm done, right? So that's how that works. Maybe I want to do a little bit more. Maybe I want to take that and I wanna paint over this flat, or this uh, tent, whatever that thing is called. Maybe I wanna paint over this little bit here and hide or obscure those cars. Maybe I wanna paint a little bit over that bit of the tree just to hide some of the light coming through, and you just hit done. Um, again, not a full tutorial. You can check out my other video for that, but if you take a look at it, let me just look here where this flag was and where this little umbrella was and where the you can see some of the parking lot. This is Berlin, by the way, the Berliner Dom, beautiful cathedral. Before and after. Keep looking right over here, my friends, and I'll show you one more time. There's before and there's after. Now, it's not a perfectly clean one because the colors don't match exactly. I would have used a source closer to what I was erasing. So over here, for example, where I erased that flag and stuff, I'd probably use these darker trees instead of these lighter ones. I don't really care in this video. It's just an example of what you can do. But these kind of tools are super powerful. You could then come back with the eraser and erase some stuff. You could erase that human. You could erase this sign and the rest of the pole that was supporting the flag. You got tons of options, so much you can do. And that's why the tools menu is, I think, the fifth essential skill for mastering Luminar. And so if you put them all together, you got filters, you got presets, you got masking, you got layers, and you got the tools. If you spend your time on these, and I'm not talking about sitting down for an hour and just slogging through, man. I'm gonna, God, I gotta get through it. It's just a pain in the ass, but I'm gonna do it. Make it fun. I mean, just jack around, take five minutes here or 10 minutes there, squeeze in when you can and just say, 
I'm gonna try one thing. I just wanna work on clone and stamp because it's kinda weird to me, Jim. Okay, great, get in there. Hey, I just wanna mess with the, you know, filter, the structure filter or the develop filter or, you know, whatever. Pick, maybe pick five filters and say, I'm gonna spend two minutes each. Set a timer on your phone or your watch and say, all right, I need a two minute timer, go. And what can I do in two minutes with this filter to get comfortable with it? Just, it's almost like speed dating. Speed date some of these filters and just rip through it. Just get comfortable with it. You don't have to uh, learn everything about everything in order to make beautiful images. But I think it's important that these are five essential skills that you know you get familiar with them. You don't have to master them. You don't have to be amazing. Um, I'm not amazing. I do pretty good work with a lot of these things. Some of it I'm okay with, not great. But I just keep trying. I keep going in there and learning. And you know, if I get a couple of few, you know, spare minutes between a call or I'm eating lunch at my desk here and I'm doing something, I might say, "Shit, I'm just gonna take five minutes and stick a photo in Luminar and just try something." It's these little incremental things that add up to uh, you know getting good. There's a there's a quote that I like that said, "There's no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs." Um, and I love that quote because that's applicable in pretty much everything in life. But all it means is there's no shortcuts. You might have a natural talent for something, which is awesome. And if you do, I, I celebrate that. I didn't have a natural talent for any of these filters. I didn't understand a lot of them. I didn't know these tools. I wasn't great at layers. I wasn't good at masking. I just spent a lot of time jacking around. So I took the stairs every day, just trodden a little bit, a few steps here or a couple of flights there. And you end up getting higher and higher in terms of your knowledge and your understanding of how to take uh, take advantage of the power of Luminar. And that's it. I'm going to shut up. It's been long enough of a video. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. If you have any questions or feedback, if you like this kind of video, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Just leave a comment down below. Um, like, share with your friends if you would. I'm real close to 10,000. I, I got a, some stuff I'm going to be giving away then. I've got a video I'm going to make, so I'll be announcing that real soon. But um, thanks for watching and following along. Hit subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you soon, friends. Have a great day. Take care. Adios.